Fuel Your Drive. I'm your host, Josh York. And guys, I am extremely, extremely excited about our guest today. Let me tell you something, something a little, a little something about our guest today. So he lives in the same world I live in. You want to know what world that is? That's the franchise world, baby. So we love the franchise world. Let me tell you, our guest today grew up difficult home life, raised in a low-end neighborhood, was filled with drugs, violence, alcohol, many visits from the police. And things really started changing for my man over here after college. His hard work, effort, pay off, really paid off, got drafted by the San Francisco Giants, follow his dream of playing Major League Baseball. After three years of playing baseball, he now runs an Inc. 500 company. He's an author. He has an amazing passion for helping people, which is something I love. And I'm super excited for this one. So, guys, warm welcome to my man, Devin Klein. Devin, welcome to the show, my friend. Josh, dude, thank you. Your energy is off the chain. And like, if I could recreate, like, if we could recreate it, like 365 million Josh Yorks, this world would be a much more ener energetic, enthusiastic, lively pace. And, uh, you know, and it, it's Friday here as we're talking and we were just talking, you know, before we got on, he's like, Hey, Fridays that, you know, that's, that's the worst day of the week for me. Cause you know, most people on Saturday and Sunday are checking out when I'm ready to go. And so, uh, no, I feel you, man. Thanks for that beautiful intro. And, um, you did your research and you know, that's appreciated. Uh, uh, you know, coming on and being able, being able to share the story with context is always important. So thanks, brother. Thanks for having me on. We're excited. Let's do this thing. Absolutely. Well, first thing I'm going to get in right away is, is I'm, I'm the big man about mindset. I believe mindset is everything. And, you know, just the fact that you played in the major leagues, I already know. Well, I already know you, so I know the deal. But, like, I want people to understand mindset applies to everything. Now, obviously, to be successful and play in the professional league, you have to have a hell of a mindset. So let's talk right away. Let's get right into it. Before we share your story, because we're going to do that in a second, but let's just let's just talk about mindset, because I, I, I constantly talk about this on all of my shows, episodes, uh, because it's so important, but people need to listen to it, because people hear, but really don't listen and execute on it. So like, talk to me, you know, rough life growing up, you know, how did you develop this mindset? You know, I, it's funny you ask that because I had to deal with a lot of things as a young kid that a lot of the people in the franchising industry now who maybe had a, a more desirable upbringing have to now deal with in their later in life as they are overcoming obstacles and trying to grow their business. And for me, home life was, you know, home life was, was the, it was so hard that when you're that young, the only thing that you can, the only thing that you can do is 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 wonder you know is this how it's going to be forever right and you start to project out you know am i going to end up like my father and, and i'm am i going to end up like you know my uncles who you know were ro uh, career roofers and and they would you know just bring drugs on the job and drink on the job and i was the, around this environment my whole life like you said i grew up in uh I would, we'd call it in, in Battle Creek, Michigan, uh, we'd call it the projects. And so it was, it was two, two like housing communities um, uh, right across from a place called the Numbered Streets, okay? And this is where I kind of grew up and you develop that mindset because you go through things early on. And if I didn't have sports, then I would not have had a North Star to develop a mindset. I think that's very important because a lot of people are like, you know, you know how do I, how do I, develop the mindset it's like everybody talks about it but they're like how do you do it well you need to have something out in front of you that you know a lot of people use the word north star I like that word you have to have something out in front of you that's compelling more compelling than you know maybe the drugs or the alcohol or the or the um you know succumbing to the physical violence or things like that it's like those things yeah they're painful but so much more or less painful than not reaching that goal. And for me, it was baseball, like you mentioned. And like, I was, yeah, you have to have a strong mindset, but like, first you have to have a great arm if you're a pitcher and you gotta have a lively arm or you gotta have really good stuff. And then you can layer a mindset over the top of that, man. I became unstoppable in my pursuit because I refused to be like my parents and my, my family. And it was just, like you said, visits from the cops every other weekend, my mom and dad would, fist fight each other right in front of me and I'm talking fist fight each other I'm not talking like pushing around I was like slamming phones in each other's faces and throwing through walls and you know as a as a 9 10 11 year old kid you're witnessing this stuff it's like you kind of have to you kind of have to say I'm in control and if you don't it's like all hell breaks loose 
you know, and you start to, you start to go down a bad path, which a lot of my friends did who didn't have that, that North star. So yeah. Um, mindset is, is definitely a, a pinnacle. And I think mindset is specifically emotional fitness. It's like that starts with honesty. It starts with speaking the truth. You know, you probably hear this all the time. People are like, everyone was saying that about everything. And it's like, no, it was like one person like saying that like one time, you know, you know? And so, you know, you got to begin with honesty and honesty is the foundation, the axiom, if you will, for having a strong mindset. And for me, it was, Hey, I have, I honestly have a shot. And honestly, if I fuck it up, I'm honestly probably going to be like my dad. And I love my dad. My dad has a huge heart. The guy is so caring, but like, man, bro, you put that bottle to his lips and it's like different person instantly. And, you know, I can remember one time and then, and then we can move on, but I think it'll illustrate, I think it'll illustrate kind of a little bit of how I grew up and how I developed this mindset. It's like, I came home one night from a basketball game and I was, a, I was a good athlete. Right. And, and I had uh, the first time all season, I scored under 20 points in a basketball game. My dad hung his hat on me scoring points on me getting the results, which I love him for that. Cause like it breeds results. So he did a lot of great things too. Uh, but I came home from a, a game where I don't know if you know, um, uh, uh, Tyson Chandler, that name, yes. Tyson Chandler, NBA. Yeah. So I was playing his team and he was so much better than me. And so he just shut me down. And so I get home and my dad puts all of his, all of his worth through my athletic achievements. And so if I don't achieve, then it's like he goes and he'll, he'll drown himself under the bottle because he knows it's going to be in the papers the next day or whatever. And he was a great athlete too. So he's like, I want my son to live up to my expectations. Well, anyways, I had a terrible game. I come home, um, I pull in the driveway and it's in Michigan, middle of winter, uh, two foot of snow on the ground. And my dad meets me at my car <clears throat> and I have a purple Ford probe with the frog eyed lens with only one that worked at the time. I bought it with my own money, working on the roof with my uncles. And he bam, cracks the window with his elbow, bam, cracks it again, rips me out of the car. I'm a little, I'm a light kid. You know, I'm like 165 pounds or whatever rips me in the backyard as he's sitting there drinking a fifth on the porch, making me, making me shoot until I make a hundred consecutive shots. It's like pretty impossible. And I don't. And so we get in a fist fight in the middle of the winter on this icy patch and this basketball hoop I have up at my house. And um, I'll never forget the day, man. I, I couldn't make a hundred in a row. I couldn't do it. He's like, you're going to, you're going to score now what you did not score in the game. And dude took, picked me up by my collar and threw me through the wooden fence. Um, and I'll never forget just laying there. I still have a scar. I wish I could show you I still have a scar in my left calf from it getting caught on the, on the wood fence from going through it. I can, I'll do, I'll remember this for the rest of my life. I sat there and I'm like, I asked myself the worst questions. Why me? Why am I in this position? Why am I doing it this way? Why does this have to be my life? And as I lay there, like contemplating, I'll never forget one more time. Boom. Boom. Out like a light. Gone. And uh, I woke up from that about a few seconds later <clears throat> and I left. And I left for about two weeks and I didn't come back home. He didn't care. Um, but what I learned from that is that when you ask yourself bad questions, you're going to continue to get bad answers. And so I was in this cycle for like two more years of just nonstop push and pull. And I started to ask myself, not why me and you the classic why me versus why not me. And I said, man, I am such a good athlete. What is the difference between, between me laying here on the ground and me going and, and fulfilling my dreams and, and playing college sports? And it was... And it, it, and it started with, started with speaking the truth. And the truth was, I love you, dad, but I don't like you. And as soon as I said that to myself, um, I moved out for a few months. I went to live with my brother and my brother took care of me. And uh, the rest was history, man. And I, I left Battle Creek and I never looked back. I love my hometown. I love my father. I've had since forgiven him for a lot of the things that he's done. I don't think you can move on from that um, without forgiveness. I don't think you can have prosperity if you don't. If you don't um, thank the people in your life who also are a detriment to you because he taught me so many great things. So between what he did do for me and what he didn't do for me, to answer your question is what created a, a level of radical honesty in me that was the foundation of saying, 
If you're not good, then you're not good. What do you need to do to get better? And that's a process we continue to go through as, as you and I both as, as CEOs and franchise owners. Absolutely, man. That's, that's a powerful story, man. I really appreciate you sharing that with me. You know, it's, that's very deep, you know, and I, I know the listeners are going to appreciate that as well. Do you, do you have a relationship with him anymore? Or? <laughs> yeah. I mean, so he, like I said, he's a really good guy, you know, like when he's not drinking, which is rare, <clears throat> he's a really good guy. He wants to see my kids and, but it's like, dude, I can't let you because last time you tried and I, you know, I thought you made it might have changed a little bit. You come here to North Carolina and you see him and he wants to take him to like the pools and stuff around here. And, you know, but he has to stop at the gas station and get five shots of fireball on the way and drink them with my girl in the car. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And so Morgan, my wife and I, we, you know, we're, we're not going to, we're not going to remove the opportunity to see his grandchildren grow. Cause I think that is not my position, but it is my position to say, I'm going to protect uh, my kids at all costs. And if that means, you know, you want to drink and sit in the passenger seat? Great. I'm going with you. Right. You know, so things like that. And so, yeah, we see each other. He's down in Florida now. Um, you know, I, and, uh, I wish, I wish him all the best and, uh, you know, hopefully at some point in his life, he can catch a vibe and change. Uh, but you know, um, been wishing for that since I was about eight years old, you know what I mean, brother. And, you know, on top of that, he's been devastated by relationships and physical violence and, you know, my mom left when I was 13. I don't have a relationship with my mom anymore. And, you know, it's sometimes sounds, it's sometimes I sound uh, like I'm begging for sympathy when I talk about my story. Um, but what I realized is that there's so much empathy out there. It's not sympathy, it's empathy. There's so much empathy for people like you and, and, and people who can look at my shoes and be like, man, you know, you should talk about that because that's a hard thing to go through. And although there are darker places to be, um, undesirable nonetheless. Yeah. Well, listen, you know, most people will say, I'm sorry, but you know what I, you know, I, I what I'm going to say is, you know, I, I believe there's, there's reason why things happen, not to you, they happen for you. And, you know, obviously you are a very special guy today. You do some, mar you know, some, some marvelous things. And I'll tell you one thing, the best thing that's going to come out of it, I already know is that you're going to be the most amazing father in the world. And I'm sure you already are. So, you know, you know, and, that, and now that's the North Star, right? And it's not you use that word. I like that word because it, it, it illuminates your goal. That's the reason I like that word. And a lot of people use it, but I'm not sure they articulate it the right way. It illuminates the goal. It's if you look up, it's always there and it's always bright. And you have a lot of things going on around it. And there's a lot of other illuminations around it of things that you care about. You look up and you can see that and you know what direction you're going. And now for me, that is my North Star in life is very, very simple. I refuse to have my kids grow up in, in, in uh, an environment that is even remotely close to the environment that I grew up in. It will be the exact opposite contrast. Yep. There's, there, there's some worry that comes along that, like privileged kids and all that. And we'll, we'll talk about that as we go because um, I think that's important to make sure that there's always a downside to a goal too. But yeah, man, I, uh, I thank him now because he showed me some things, confidence, um, um, relentlessness, um, pure, pure blind confidence, I would say is a better word. Like he's such an arrogant dude. Like <laughs> I was like, he was a McDonald's all American basketball player, you know, full ride to a Xavier, but couldn't pull it together. If you know what I mean? Yeah. And so now for me, it's like, man, I look at, you know, I'm looking at a picture on my wall right now of my family, a little collage. And I'm like, man, that, that's all I need. The love, the love in 30 years that I'm going to be able to feel from my children looking at me and being like, dad, holy shit, dude. I did not even know. What, I didn't even know. And, and you getting from that all the way to this, man, we appreciate you. We respect you. We love you. And they're going to say all the things to me that I wish I could say to my dad. Um, and that's powerful. It's very powerful, man. Very special. And I really appreciate you sharing that. It's very, Absolutely. very. Thanks that's, for asking. That, yeah, that's deep. That's deep, you know. Um, so, you know, it, it's crazy. We have a lot of similarities, a lot, by the way. But this is this show's about you, not me. So, you know. I'm, get, I'm getting you on next week, though. I'm going to get you on next I'm going to dig so, into your mind a little bit. So, you know, it's funny. I've. I've interviewed pretty much the best in the world. Like I have like the best of the best on my show. And um, there's so many simul similarities between everybody. It's pretty crazy. And yeah. so the question I ask is, do you think you would have been as successful if you didn't have a challenging life growing up? Because I'll tell you right now, 99% of the people, including myself, have had rough lives and they're very successful. 
Now, I'm not saying you can't have a good life and be successful, but w- what are your thoughts on that? No chance. Not a, not a chance in hell. And um, it's, because, it's because of the maturity levels that you gain from the things that you have to deal with. You know, when your head's through a fence by the man that you love the most in your life when you're a young kid, it's like, you know what I mean? So it's like you learn lessons from that. And those are hard lessons in their in their lessons that take a long time to manifest themselves. You don't know when it's happening to you, why the hell it's happening to you, but you look back on it in retrospect and, you know, things are always harder in the present than they are in the future, than they seem to be in the future. So you look back on, you're like, okay, that wasn't that hard, but look at, I learned all these lessons from it. And um, no, so I mean, so one thing that one thing, so I didn't get it. I've always been an, an intelligent and intuitive person. That's natural gift in this. Like, I really believe that like, you know, I really believe that entrepreneurship is, uh, has a level of DNA that's equivalent to like a, a professional athlete. You have a DNA inside of you for making money and impacting people the same way that LeBron James has DNA inside him to dunk a basketball and run and jump and all these things. And arguably more rare. Entrepreneurship is arguably more rare um, to, be, to be super, super successful is like the pinnacle, right? Um, and so I think, I think you know, along the way, as you learn these lessons as you're young and as you're an intuitive and intelligent person, which is just a part of your DNA, you, you notice gaps maybe a little bit more than uh, the next person would notice a gap. You notice uh, you have a little bit more self-awareness. Uh, like I said, honesty ties back into that. You start to be really honest with yourself and you're like, you know, if I'm going to go play college baseball, I better tool up because I don't have, I don't, you know, I don't have everything that I need to make it at that level. And so I wasn't getting that, even though I wanted it so bad from my, from my dad and my uncles, all they wanted to do is, was, was smoke pot, do lines and watch the lions. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. And, and, yeah. and, you know, so that was that environment. So I got nothing out of them besides how to party. Um, so I had the awareness to, to know that there was a gap. And so like so many people have done, our age, right? People that are, that are our age and who grew up on the internet. Like I found, uh, it actually was a CD. I found a Tony Robbins CD when I was a young kid and my, they had like, you know, one of those old, uh, uh, music decks and it had like all the different like digital decks in it and had like the 10 CD rotation player yeah. and all that. Yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I found a Tony Robbins CD in there, bro. And I remember, um, cause, uh, before I had bought a car, I, I told you, I earned a little bit of money. Um, uh, you know, like I said, entrepreneurial DNA, I earned a little bit of money buy myself a car. Um, but I, before that I was at, uh, 17 years old, I believe before that I would ride my bike to school. I lived next to the junior high and then about two miles away from the high school. And so I would ride my bike and, um, I know this will antiquate me a little bit. Um, uh, but I was at the tail end of the Sony Walkman era. Um, and I would play the CD in it and you know, the, the skip resistance and all those silly things that used to be a part of that. And uh, I would ride my bike and I would listen to that every day. And I wrote about this in my book, stop starting over. This was the moment in my life where I learned principles, uh, where I learned how to navigate mentally when I learned how important emotional health is. And some of those principles on that personal power CD that I used to listen to on repeat are literally here with me today and I'm looking at a picture of myself on the wall uh, standing next to Tony and shaking his hand and, and meeting him and you know not, not, not any sense of like a, a fan meet and greet but like we really wanted to meet each other I told him I DM'd him like 30 times and I over and over and over and over the same message like this story essentially and um, ended up getting he, he gave me and Morgan some tickets to go out to uh, where the hell were we at? Oh, San Jose. We were out in San Jose and we got a chance to hook up for about five minutes, which was really, really cool and just brought everything full circle, you know? It's like, dude, all I want to tell you, and I know so many people tell you this, I was like, all I want to tell you is you were my father. Like you, you were the person that I wished I had had in my life. And when I found you, I found myself. When I found you, I found um, perspective. When I found your tape, I found uh, that there are more tools out there than I thought were available. And I also realized how fucked up my situation was, right? And yeah. so that was really powerful in my life. And, you know, I, uh, I think, you know, I think, uh, I think my, my philosophy is that follow two or three people that you want to be like more than anyone else in the world and cut it off from there, you know, because yeah. if, you, if you follow too horizontal, then you start to look and sound and feel like other people and it's disingenuine and, you know, you've probably found yourself at some point regurgitating someone else's thought and you're like, wait a second, 
hold on. Maybe not. I have before. I'm like, wait a second. Hold on. That's not me. That's not honest. Like my axiom is honesty. I'm sitting here fucking lying to myself by speaking someone else's language. Um, you know, but it, a lot of times it was Tony early in my career, 23, 24, 25, until I realized how full of shit I really was. And then it's like, okay, well, you can take that, and, but you, you can't step into the shirt, but you get to stand on the shoulders, right? And you get to take those things and, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. So you have to take things and you have to find a distinction that really helps people that no one else has been able to help people with before. And so I'm excited for the new, uh, the next, you know, five years of my life because I really feel so congruent with original thought. It's just like comes through me. I don't need to think about it. You know, I write a lot. I write a lot. I'm, I'm a big fan of writing. If anybody out there is mentally or emotionally in a bad place, writing does one thing. It helps you, it helps you put your thoughts on paper and, and putting your thoughts on paper forces you to think. And when you think independently, you can put your thoughts on paper and we put it on paper, it's permanent. So you're a lot more careful about what you put on paper. And then you can go through and you can say, okay, break it down line by line and say, am I full of shit or not? You know, and you start to, you start to really develop your own, um, um, your own narrative that, that can, that can help people. And fortunately, you know, my wife and I are plugged into this. Well, not fortunately, I would say, thank you, Morgan and Devin for plugging yourselves into a place in society where there was a void and thank you and everyone around us too, obviously, but it starts and stops with us. And so, you know, we plugged ourselves into a niche just like you did. And, um, you know, you figure out the problems of those people in that niche by learning from them, by listening to them, by being a great communicator. And then you find the gaps that other people aren't able to fill. Uh, and then I started writing about them. And all of a sudden, before I knew it, I looked down and I had a book and I was like, damn, this is pretty cool. And then we sold, you know, we sold 15,000 co copies or so. And that was pretty cool. And then I'm like, wow, maybe I'm pretty good at this writing thing. And so I'm, I'm in the middle of uh, another book right now. So I'm excited for that. I'll come out next year. That's great. That's great. Yeah. That's really awesome. Well, let's, let's, let's get into obviously burn boot camp because, you know, it's doing big things. You just said the ink. 500 list, which is great. I want to tell a little people about it. Obviously we're both in the fitness space, totally different models, but you know, people, you know, I'm sure people already know about it, but why don't you touch on it a little bit? Yeah, for sure. And I love what you do by the way with gym guys, because there's a, there's a market that we don't touch, which is, which is why I'll text you and be like, Hey, I got a dude's looking for personal training. I know the guy you have, you guys have a location here, right? So like, we're not, we're not competitors. Um, I mean, in the sense of maybe, a. Uh, I would say this in a, in a negative way, but an ignorant person would might look at, you know, gym guys and burn not, and be like competitors. And like, not competitors at all. People say, yeah. so we have, we have clients, most of our clients still go to the gym. They'll take a, you know, any type of, you know, aerobic class, spin class. There's, you know, I don't, I don't look at anyone in the fitness space as a competitor at all. You know? Yeah. And neither do I, and neither do I think about it as conspiring to make this world a better place together. And that's, you know, I think yep. we, we talked about that a little bit, like you and I share that, but it's rare. Not, not a lot of people in this industry share it because if you look at the stats, it's like there's a hundred billion dollars from coast to coast in America in sales last year in the fitness yep. industry. 68.5% of people are overweight. Yep. I mean, Great. it's broken, bro. It's like broken. So like guys like you and I, we, we have to step up and we have to, cause you can't do it alone. I can't do it alone. No individual company is going to, or person or trainer or, or organization or nonprofit is going to be able to do it alone. It's got to be a, it's got to be a unified front to say, you know, this whole idea of this, this whole idea of this 80% fitness, 20% nutrition shit is broken because that's not what Vilfredo Pareto said. He didn't say that. What he said was 80% of the effect or 80%, 80, 80 of the results are going to come from 2% of the strategy. And so you know, I think we need to educate people. And what that really means in the fitness industry is that 80% of the time, you should be focused on your nutrition, your fitness, your recovery, and you should be all in for that 80% of that time, like all in everything in your life should be, uh, should be organized around your own personal health, you know, and then part of personal health too is socialization. Part of it is you know, being able for you and I to sit down on a Friday night I don't, to, to the extent that you want to have a beer on a Friday to sit down and have a few beers and have a conversation and maybe eat some wings and not feel bad about it. And it's like, we get into this place where it's like, you have to do it all the time and you have to be so regimented and it's 80% fitness and 80% nutrition and 20% fitness. No, no, no. It's 80% of everything. And then 20% of the time you get to step back and you get to look at life and you get to enjoy it and you get to socialize. Now, 
that's generally speaking. I'm more like 95.5, right? Like I'm, I might take six hours in a week where I, you know, have a beer with you and have some wings and stuff, but I want to get back on it because I'm not average and I'm not here to be average, you know? Um, so yeah, so burn is, burn is quintessentially trying to solve that problem, you know? And, and I think that in some regard, you guys are too. And, uh, it's, it becomes, it becomes a learning curve that, that is, that exists in society where you and I have to go out and we have to educate people. That means you have to be a great marketer. That means you have to be a great entrepreneur if you want to yep. affect change. And yep. so it's like, start with the problem. What's the solution? And then to affect real change, you know, being an entrepreneur and having things in your control and being a good marketer is very, very important to that and making money doing it because you can't impact people if your doors are closed or you can't impact people if your franchisees aren't making money and things like that. And so, you know, burn it. So burn 45 minute workout, you know, on, on the surface level, right? Like nothing under the hood. I kind of gave all the under the hood stuff. It's a 45 minute workout. We're focused on, uh, we're focused on our families and our community, empowering our families through women. We are, we're very, uh, female oriented. We have child watch for our moms. Uh, we have, a uh, I'm drinking a, one of our smoothies from our smoothie bar right now called burn nutrition. It's our, it's our proprietary supplement line and we're innovating left and right. It's really, really doing well. Um, we have uh, four protein flavors, two plant-based, um, and, and two, uh, whey based and then two ignite, uh, two uh, pre-workout powders called ignite, two different flavors coming out with a bar next year. So that's rolling. And, uh, we have a great retail business. Um, our, I'm an athlete, right? And so I bring a lot of that into this business. Like from a leadership standpoint, I think it's probably obvious, but from how, uh, from, from how that leadership creates the team that creates the fans, right? And so our retail business is a byproduct of that. It's like everyone in our organization buys burn stuff, like we call it burn gear. And we have, uh, it's very niche too. So there's not a lot of gentleman stuff. There's a lot of female stuff. Um, so that's great. And, you know, as we build out, you know, we started in around the same time you guys did, we started franchising in 2015. Uh, we now, we now have, there's a whole cool story to that if you ever want to get into that. But now we have 267 doors open. We'll open 68 and 69, or 269 this weekend. Uh, we have 424 locations in the United States alone awarded. And uh, yeah, we're, we, by 2025, we hope to have 800 units. Oh, hope is a bad strategy. Let me, honesty, people, right? I caught myself, honesty. No, no, no. We will have 800 locations open in the States um, in, uh, when we close books in, in 2026 for 2025. And, uh, you know, whole, uh, whole plans for a, a really large impact and kind of beginning to cultivate some of the more macro unified front um, desires that this brand has and, and partnering with other big brands to deliver messages that are, that are paradigm shifting. So like, if you want to shift the paradigm, you got to get on mass media to get on mass media. You got a shit ton of money to do that really, really well. Um, it's got to be continued. You got to, you can't just do it once. You got to do it over and over and over and over. And so yep. my, my, uh, my goal here shortly is to, uh, you know, once Jim guys is 5,000 units worldwide and, and burn is 5,001, um, <laughs> you know, I'm a competitor. Um, you know, we'll, we'll partner together. And we'll make some real change happen, man. Love it. I love it. Absolutely love it. So something I always talk about is, you know, people always ask what it, what it, what it takes to like, you know, like what's the trait, like what's the one trait that it really takes to be super, super successful. And someone told me this a long time ago and it's very true. And I'm, you know, I would, I would have developed this on my own without even having that person tell me this, but the person who can endure the most pain for the longest period of time is the one who will be the most successful. So I don't even need to ask you the question because I know the answer. You've been to tons of pain. I already know that because so have I, and I still go through pain on a daily basis, but you know, pain equals growth. So maybe you could share like, you know, a very painful story, growing issues, you know, because again, in the world, in the word impossible, which I teach my, my oldest all the time, it's, it's not a real word because the actual word is possible and any single thing is possible. So talk about like a crazy, crazy, painful story experience you've had over the years growing the business. Wow. Oh man. I've got so many failures, bro. It's like, how can you pick from the top one, the word, the most impactful one? Um, so I'll, I'm going to put my, I'm going to put myself in the position to take all the responsibility for this because everything uh, that in my organization is, is my fault. 
um, except for when we're successful. That is participation. I have participation in that success. I have leadership in that success. And so the one, probably the thing that pops out to me the most is when we started Burn Nutrition. When we started Burn Nutrition, I had no idea what I was doing, right? Like, shoot first, ask questions last. That's how an entrepreneur should be rolling in my opinion, especially yep. if you have no education like I did. It's like use the lack of education to not install fear in front of you that slows down your progress. And so I, uh, I reached out, um, I had no formal like RFP process or no formal processes. It's me and four people sitting around a, a table at the upstairs of my gym in a little, you know, 500 square foot spot. And, uh, yeah, so we started Burn Nutrition and I'm like, okay, I'm not going to white label because I think that this brand really has, I'm a very long-term mindset. I, you know, Morgan and I still own 100% of our company. We're not going anywhere. We're young. We're 32. It's like, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not giving up equity. So I'm like, all right, we're going to go fast because we're going to figure it out anyway as we, as we just roll, as we roll over these problems. Well, man, one of the problems was, uh, was pretty tough. And so we were, we were uh, looking out for uh, manufacturers and we, I didn't realize how vulnerable you would be only having one manufacturer. And so I only had one manufacturer for burn nutrition. And so we come out with like the first three lines, the first three runs and they were great. And it would, they were very well received. It tasted delicious, all per proprietary blend, uh, nothing, nothing like, you know, we didn't create any, you know, new science or anything, but it was all proprietary. We put it together. We sourced the ingredients. And, uh, what happened was our fourth run, our fourth run, we, we deploy it. It goes out to all the gyms and we start getting messages like two days later with pictures and these pictures, all right, which by the way, people, this, it's not like this anymore. Just so you know, <laughs> these, these, these pictures uh, were open canisters of our protein with metal shavings in them. They had, uh, you know, when you, screw, oh bro, when you screw something into like a, uh, like a, you get you, like a screw into a metal, yep. 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 you get that little spiral metal shaving. It was like 10% filled with all of them. 10% oh filled with these metal shavings. Oh my God. And, and so I just, at this time, $250,000 was a lot of money for me. And so, I had spent two hundred fifty dollars thousand dollars on the uh, the uh, the product run, and then I had also put another twenty thousand dollar deposit down to lock my pricing in because you know like if you know anything about supplements it's very volatile because you have to source the raw ingredients and seasonality and there's all types of reasons for that distribution logistics, and so what ended up happening was we had to recall the whole thing right so um, we had to recall it we. We, um, we bought it back, <laughs> stupid, we bought it back, but it's we, not stupid because it said a lot about who we are to our franchise partners. We're not going to put you out there an yeah. arm mistake and make it yours. So we bought yeah. it back. Um, you know, probably could have bought it back in a more intelligent way. I would, I would say that was the stupid part, but these metal shavings pissed people off as you can imagine. And there was one gentleman that drank it and didn't realize that the metal shavings were in it and he got sick. Oh my like, God. And that was not good. It was not oh. good. And so, um, although he's fine and he was fine and it was just a minor thing. Um, so a little internal, you know, some little internal things from the metal shavings, but dude, it was scary for me. Cause it's like, now you're really seriously harming someone and you, you're seriously liable now. And so I call my manufacturer, by the way, I have one. And so I call him, no answer, call him, no answer, call him, no answer, no answer, no answer, no answer, no answer. Nutrisport pharmaceuticals, by the way. If anybody stay away from them, uh, they wouldn't answer me, wouldn't answer me, wouldn't answer me, wouldn't answer me. Finally, I got on the phone with the CEO and he basically told me to kick rocks. And, um, so I was out 250 grand at the order, the buyback, the $20,000 deposit, he would not give me back. And now I had sick people. I had detriment to the brand. It was just, a, it was, a, what, it was what, a what, what did he, why was there metal shavings in there? Did he even give I, you an explanation? No, bro. No. Oh my God. He, he was the most, he was the most, um, I won't say his name, but he was the most um, insensitive person I've probably ever met. The most selfish person I've probably ever met. He's basically like, you bought it. <laughs> you bought it. Do you, do you get it from anywhere else? You get, just get it from me? Yeah, you bought it. Yeah, you're not getting your money back. That's not how we run our business model. He goes, you have the liability. I'm like, okay. And by the way, I'm a 25 year old kid at this point, right? 
you know, maybe, maybe, maybe just turning 26 or so, but it was early in the career when we started this. And, oh my God, you know, um, <laughs> not, sh- not shocking to me. Some people are probably like, Oh my God, but this is, this is what business is about. Now the average person probably would have had a panic attack, cr- you know, collapsed, would have moved forward, probably would have just threw the towel in. And, you know, obviously you continue to keep, you know, moving forward, fix the problem. Now, obviously, everything's fixed. I'm sure everything's smooth. You learn from it. You know, failing is a very good thing. And people should look at, at failures as, 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 as wins, actually, because they're lessons and you're going to learn from it. The, 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 the mistake where people go wrong is if they actually fail and make a mistake and they do it again because they, they're not paying attention enough or they're just, care, you know, they're careless with it, that's where you go wrong and that's where you lose. But obviously, you fixed it. And how is it running today? I'm sure it's running fantastic. Oh. Yeah, man, it's great today. And this was, uh, this was like a little, you know, looking back, we mentioned that things are always harder in the moment than they are in retrospect than they yep. seem. Yep. And so it was a little bump in the road and it didn't make, it didn't make a ton of noise because we did the right thing. Um, obviously, you know, when you feel the pressure of all that, when you're the top of any organization, you know, I think Gary, uh, who says that he says you deal with the dog shit or something like, he's like, I don't know, somebody out there is like, when you're at the top of the organization, you eat all the, eat all the dirt. I think someone says, and that's true. You eat all the dirt. It's like you get the rewards, but you eat the dirt. And, do, uh, so yeah, now, yeah, now it's going great. Um, we have, uh, we, we have, um, thorough quality assurance process in place. We are, uh, multi-sourced vendors. All of our ingredients uh, are third-party tested. We have all the certifications, um, you know, grass-fed and finished whey protein, really good stuff, um, you know, pea protein, rice blend uh, on the plant side. And it's really, it really has a lot of integrity. It aligns with Morgan and I and our values. And, you know, you could make it cheaper and you could make more margin if you didn't, you know, go the organic route. But at the end of the day, you know, we feel that a supplement should be as clean as possible when it's the secondary choice to getting, uh, you know, your protein or your nutrients or your, you, you know, your macros or your micros in. And uh, so now it's really good. It's really good. Thanks for asking. We just, we're, we're expanding like crazy. We're going to come out with a bar. Our gyms love it. Our clients love it. Raving fans. And we're even getting other uh, franchise models asking us if, if, if we're willing to white label our products now. Um, which I'm still contemplating. I don't know. <laughs> got it. Got it. Now, now this, now you, so how did you go from, you know, that one vendor to finding a new vendor? What was that research like? I'm sure you were very different in that approach. Cause I think it's uh, important for the people to hear. Yeah, no, I have no idea what I'm doing still. Um, I hire, I have hire people around me that have a, 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 that are, that are so bright, so intelligent, but they fit the culture and they fit the attitude, and they fit the belief. And uh, Kim Hunter is our VP of retail. And I'll tell you what, man, she's a rock star. Um, uh, we're about to have our first million dollar month in retail alone. And um, that's just the shirt, the, the uh, apparel side of it, not even the nutrition side of it. She's innovated like crazy. She's got our business so stable. And I could not take a single ounce of credit for it. What I take, uh, what I can take some credit for is the uh, economics around it, right? And, and making sure that we have a solid long-term economic model to stand on that's going to really uh, it's going to really help our franchise partners make more money. And in franchising, you know, looking through that franchise partner, we call them franchise partners. Some people say franchisees or Z's. Um, we call them FPs. You know, looking through that lens in this business is very important. You can, if you're a franchisor and you're a successful one, I already know that you're the least selfish person in the room. So now Kim is crushing it. She's crushing it. We're doing great. We got e-commerce uh, side rolled out as well as as well as the in gym wholesale model. It's starting to diversify, like I said. And uh, you know, if if we could do it over again, probably wouldn't take metal shavings in it. But I wouldn't I wouldn't trade the lesson. You know what I mean? That's because I would never want to put people at harm. But uh, I would I wouldn't trade the lesson for anything because it made me realize that a I'm I have no idea what I'm doing in the supplement business. So I need to find somebody that does. And I need to help them become a better leader. And that's my job for her is say, hey, you're the knowledge. You're the knowledge worker here. Okay. I'm going to teach you how to be a better leader. I'm going to teach you how to get more out of your team. I'm going to teach you how to innovate. I'm going to teach you how to negotiate. And you're going to teach me some of those things too. Um, But one thing I can't teach you is how to merchandise products on a shelf. No idea. Great. Great. As I always say, never focus on your, your weaknesses, delegate your weaknesses and focus on your strengths. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe in that more. Couldn't yep. believe in it more. Very, very we, true. We stopped, we stopped talking about weaknesses at my, our second year in business in our reviews. Uh, we do a, a two reviews a year. Um, yeah, we just, we just crossed it off. We said, we don't, we want to be aware of what you're weak at. And then I want you to 
try to make that weaker by strengthening your strengths. And, you know, I think most people know that. Are you really doing it is what I would question. Are you really doing it? Are you, are you walking and talking and behaving all congruently at the same time? Yep. Very, very true. Very true. Well, listen, last question I like to always ask. If you were conducting this interview, what question would you have asked? Can I ask you something? Sure. Okay. Um, international franchising. And it, we'll, we'll dive into this later, but international franchising is something that I'm not very familiar with thus far. Um, I've had the iFranchise group in to consult with me. Um, and, uh, you know, I got some baseline knowledge, but what would be the top three things that I would need to know about international franchising to be successful like you are? The first thing you need to know is you need to make sure you find the right partner. That's very, very, very important. And number two is making sure every single one of your systems is completely scalable so you can control and manage and oversee everything. And the last thing is make sure your legal team on the international side is very, 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 very good. And we could take this offline and I have no problem helping you with that. And I could, you know, we're about to enter into two more countries and I could explain how to do it and give you some good insight. Um, but once it does start kicking off, it's fantastic. You know, we're like, I, you know, I'm sure you, you see my stuff where, where we have literally blown up in the United Kingdom. It's out of control. Like it's out of control how fast we've taken off there. We, I think we're already up to like 26 clients. We literally just launched like two, three weeks ago. Dude, that's awesome! Congratulations, and you yeah, know, the, I, I know you. how I know how I know how savvy you have to be to navigate those waters because I've heard the horror stories. I mean, you even you even know about maybe uh, maybe a tar the target a multi unit retail, not franchising, but Target going into Canada. It's like that's that's the quintessential place here in the states, and they go into Canada, they do it wrong, and no one even takes them serious. They actually shut down. Canada is the hardest. Canada is very, very hard. Can you, you, the United Kingdom was not as hard. Canada is very, very difficult. Um, but you know, I just surround myself with the right people. I learn, and um, you know, and, and I can help you with that. That's no worries. Yeah, I'd love to dive into that more. That'd be great. Yeah. So, but back to my question. What is the question you would have asked? <laughs> I would have asked me. This one always throws people oh, off. Yeah. No. No. I got a good one. I got a good one. How, sure. how do you and your wife do it? with your relationship and, and, and she's right next to me right now, literally podcasting with, uh, 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 burnout. I think it's the burnout to blow up podcast. Like people that were kind of burnt out with their jobs or their careers. And then they Got took it. the leap. And then, so she's over here doing it right now. And the way that we do that is we have different characters. Okay. I'm Devin, um, which is the friend, right? I'm the CEO, which is the boss. Uh, and the leader. I like leader better. I am daddy, which is daddy. And I'm also lover when that needs to be my character. Uh, I'm also, I'm also hubby. So funny yep. you say this, you know, I, I, it's again, so many similarities. So I like to, I consider myself a video game. I don't play video games, but when I was a kid, I played video games and you know, you can select the different characters and literally in my head, I play this game with myself all the time because you know, my wife and I are total, total opposites. But when I come home, I rarely, rarely even bring up the business. There's just so many layers, so much going on. She's not going to solve my problems or issues or challenges, whatever it may be. And there's really no need to talk about it. Back in the day, it was very different, but I've learned over the years how to like control that. But I, I play like this alter ego with myself where I have these characters and it's like pretty much a similar thing you just said. And that's what I do. And um, I also look at entrepreneurship as, as, a, as a game too. And, uh, yeah, for sure. You know, that's, that's, that's very funny. But, um, but listen, this was great. People are going to get a lot of value out of this. But where can people find you? Uh, where can they get your book? What if they want to get some of your nutrition? Just share that with everybody, please. Uh, yeah, man, for sure. So you have burnbootcamp.com. If you want to go check out any of the nutrition stuff or any of the gyms, they're all, you, you can find everything you need from the burn boot camp offering there. Great. Devin Klein, anywhere on the internet, Instagram, YouTube. Um, one thing that's pretty cool, uh, you know, and I'd love, do you, do you train at all? Like, do you ever like, like, I, I, did you, you started, you started obviously that way, but like, do you still go in and like train your trainers and train them how to train people ever? Not, not okay. anymore. No. Okay. Not anymore. So, so for me, um, for me, that's something, dude, it's just, it's in my heart. Like, I love that. That is something that I will probably not stop doing in my youth. 
while I still have it because it gives, it brings me back to baseball. It brings me back to the thing that made me successful in the first place. And so um, every Tuesday for one hour I train and I train, um, uh, it's called Burn Bootcamp On Demand and we go live. Uh, now it's a closed platform, um, but we go live one time a week on a Tuesday. And so uh, anybody out there who wants to get their workout on right now, you can do it anywhere in the world. Body weight, um, body weight. We have equipment, but there's a body weight station so people can follow along. And it's been really, really great. Uh, you know, over the COVID-19 era, we've gotten almost 2.5 million uh, workouts done, uh, which is fantastic. And um, we're very proud of that. And um, I would love for people just to come and, 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 you know, feel the energy, feel the vibe, check it out. Um, you know, go to uh, my Instagram if you want to get all the down low on that. That's great. That's great. Well, listen, Devin, thank you so much for coming on. You know, really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, I, I know this is definitely going to be a very, very popular episode. So thank dude, you again. Dude, and you know I'm bringing you on the Devin Klein Show. I'm bringing you on. We're going to unpack all types of things. Thank you for uh, uh, pitching and catching with me, brother. It's It's been a real pleasure to get to know you over the last, you know, few months here as we've kind of spaced out some pretty great communication. And, yep. you know, anything I can ever do for you, like I said offline, I'm here, man. And, and I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate it, man. All right. Well, as you know, I'm your host, Josh York. Until next time, remember, fuel your drive.